Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Aiden Filipchak, who is a sales agronomist with Pride Seeds. And we're doing a corn school. We're going to be talking about nutrient management in corn. So welcome, Aiden. It's so good to have you. Thanks for having me. So looking at nutrient management, what are some factors that would play a role in what you're going to decide for your corn crop? Well, first, you want to know what your soil is, what texture it is, and you want to do soil sampling. That's going to be your key to understanding what nutrients are in your soil and what you need to put in. Also understanding what crop and what yield, overall yield you want to target for that year is going to be pretty important when deciding what nutrients you want to put down. When looking at our soil, I cover a wide range with all of Alberta. So when I go up north, we can see typically blacker soils. It's going to have a higher clay and organic matter content. That's going to be important for water and nutrient holding capacity, and you're going to have a decrease in nutrient leaching. Moving down to southern Alberta, we typically see a lighter, sandier, textured soil. It's in the brown and dark brown soil zone. So we're going to have lower organic matter, which all play an important role in our nutrients. Okay, so does the brown soil zone, because there's brown soil zones up north as well, right? Um, so is it more based on your soil zone, or is it the temperature and the environment around it? Well, each field's going to be different, and basically it's going to be coming off of your parent material of your okay. soil. Okay, so what macronutrients are going to be the most important if you're looking at growing corn to obtain optimal yields? Yeah, so your NPKs, like most crops, are going to be your most important. Nitrogen is going to be the highest uptake in a corn crop. We would say you'd be removing about 250 pounds of nitrogen per acre for a 26 ton corn crop harvested at 60% whole plant moisture. When we're looking at nitrogen, it's also important to like know your soil. If you have your sandy soil, your cation exchange capacity will be a little bit lower and that's going to be your main tool for measuring your, nutri your nitrogen holding capacity. So when you have a low CEC value of about 10, which is pure sand, you're going to be able to hold about 100 pounds of nitrogen. We know corn requires quite a bit more than that, doing that as well as factoring your fertilizer application timings. The second highest nutrient requirement that we're going to need for a corn plant is potassium. Potassium is very important for our photosynthesis, stomata regulation, protein and starch synthesis. And since corn is a C4 plant, it requires lots of water and lots of heat. So that when we get all that water, you're going to need enough potassium to really help regulate that, those stomata and just use your, have optimal water uptake. And then the third highest nutrient requirement we're going to have is phosphorus. Phosphorus is important for cell division and enlargement. So that's going to be important for both your silage and grain crops. Although we don't need as much of it, it's equally as important, especially when we're experiencing those exponential periods of growth between like V6 when your stem elongation phase occurs and VT, which is tasseling. Okay, and how do the macronutrient requirements differ from crops like canola or wheat or... Corn's a big plant, it's going to need lots of nutrients throughout the growing season. It needs all of those nutrients to get energy and to really grow up to get there, especially in a silage crop, it's gonna grow tall. You want it to be the tallest crop you see in the field. It's gonna need high nitrogen, high potassium, and moderately high phosphorus. And what should growers be considering? So if they're coming into corn for the first year, what would be some of the things that they should be looking out for, maybe doing before they plant their corn crop or even choose a variety? Well, I probably sound like a broken record here, but soil sampling, that's going to be your biggest indicator of what nutrients you need to put into the soil for your corn crop. To, generally, we have a high phosphorus content in the soil since it's relatively, well, it is very immobile in the soil. So if you do apply phosphorus, only about 15 to 30% of that phosphorus is going to be available for plant uptake in that first year post application. Nitrogen is extremely mobile in the soil and plants. So it is important to really time those applications and just know when you when you have water in the field for many days, you could experience leaching or volatilization. 
Okay, and you said in the first year, so what happens in, in subsequent years? So typically when we have phosphorus in the soil, you're gonna have an abundance, like I said. You're gonna be able to utilize maximum 30% of that, and then the other rest of the phosphorus is gonna sit in that soil, and it's just gonna keep building up as a bank. Generally, you're gonna see your phosphorus that your, you, your plants are utilizing this year are gonna be using phosphorus that was applied five, even 10 years prior. Oh, wow. And how does that work with subsequent rotations? And, you know, like what type of rotation do you guys recommend then for those nutrients? Well, it's always good to have a good rotation. Following your corn up after cereals is always good. You're going to have typically pretty good nutrients or potatoes even. There's high nutrient, usually lots of fertilizer going down on potatoes. So you're going to have high nutrients. I wouldn't recommend putting corn in after canola just because canola does a good job of cleaning up the soil, but it also does a good job of cleaning up those microbes. Corn's really nest dependent on that for helping breaking down and mineralize those nutrients for, to make it available for plant uptake. So let's say I've seeded corn this year. I am headed out my field, doing some scouting, kind of seeing what's going on out there. How would I know if there's any nutrient deficiencies? Well, that's a good question. So nitrogen, if we see any deficiencies in that, it's gonna be along the midrib of the plant you're gonna first start seeing chlorosis occur on that. So your plant's gonna start getting a little bit lighter brown and turning brown and drying up. After that, if there's no fertilizer passes done to help fix that, you're gonna start seeing necrosis of the leaves and it'll just completely kill off the leaf and eventually the plant. Okay, so top dressing though, you can help it at that stage. Yeah, you can, especially if you're using liquid over like a pivot mm -hmm. for fertigation, but usually nitrogen's pretty mobile and it'll get to the plant when you need it. So phosphorus is a little bit trickier to see in the field, generally because when you see phosphorus deficiency, it's gonna be purple. You're gonna see purpling along that main stem, but typically you'll also see it along the leaf margins. So when you do see that leaf margin starting to turn purple and work its way in, you can start thinking maybe this is phosphorus deficient. It is tricky though, because when we see the corn turning purple, that could be from stress. Like I said earlier, when, plant, when the corn doesn't like it, if you're having lots of wind, lots of even hail or something along that main stem, it will turn a little bit purple and it's pretty normal to see that in the field. But really just making sure you're looking at the plant where it's starting to come purple with prolonged periods of phosphorus deficiency, those leaves are gonna to start to curl upwards. So if we, see, if we do see potassium deficiencies in our field, we're gonna see the leaf tips as, long, as well as the leaf margins starting to turn chlorotic and then necrosis. We'll also see stunted growth with, all, with deficiencies in all three of these nutrients, especially when we're it's early season or when we're in stem elongation phase. So really what it comes down to, much like a lot of the other crops, is you want to be out in your field scouting when it comes down to it. Yeah, I would say it's really important to get out into that field as that corn's emerging until it gets up into that stem elongation phase, V6. That's going to be really important as well as throughout the year. That's going to also tell, help you time your fertilizer applications and overall just help improve your yield at the end of the year. So you had said that prior to V6, you want to be out there scouting in your field. Um, so when would be a good time to be adding those extra nutrients if the crop is needing them? Yeah, so V6 is really when we could, maybe even a little bit before, into V4 and V5 would be a good time to apply those nutrients just to make sure they're into that seed row and able to be taken up by those plants. This is also an important phase because that's usually when you're going to be putting in your last pass of herbicides, maybe V8 with some of the newer herbicides, but that's when your canopy closure is going to start occurring. So it's important to get those in and that rapid stem elongation phase, it's going to need a lot of nutrients to supply it for that. The next time after that, you're going to be wanting to put it in at VT. So that's right as your corn's tasseling, right before the reproductive stages occur. So you want those nutrients in, ready to go in that plant for when that ear starts to develop and really get a good ear set on that. Okay, and do you have any words of encouragement for producers that are planting corn this year, that are, you know, maybe considering it for next year? Yeah, I think it's just a good good idea to, to talk with your local agronomists or whoever you're working with and just really get a good feel for what your corn needs and just to really dial in those fertilizer applications and just control your weeds for the weed free period. 
Fantastic. Well, that's a lot of information and thank you so much for joining us. And that was Aiden Philipchuk on Real Agriculture. <laughs>